Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be restoring the engine bay on the Coupe GT. We're going to be taking it from something that looks like this. Ta-da! It's a detailer's dream. And transforming it into something that looks like this. And there we have it. We're all done. And I'm going to take you through the whole process. Let's go and take a look. Now then, a little bit of background on this one. The car was in regular use for about 35 years until three years ago when it was laid up outside and the elements have taken their toll. There's surface corrosion on the block and there's aluminium oxidation on the inlet manifold and everything looks a bit run down and it, it needs rejuvenating and saving so that that engine bay can match the condition of the rest of the car with all the work we've done. So today I'm going to take you all the way into the depths of the engine bay and we're going to build our way all the way back out. I'm going to give you an idea of the products I'm using and also the depth I go into and why to make this thing really, really shine. Anyway, let's get into it. Now then, let's have a quick look at the engine bay in a little bit more depth before we go to the trouble of rejuvenating it. Now, all I've done at the moment is painted the sump and then the other side of the block down through and under here and as you can see I've masked a few little bits off um, I needed access to the sump and to get that access because there was surface corrosion which is where it always starts I had to remove the radiator shroud to remove the radiator shroud you have to remove the radiator however once that has had two nice coats of black paint and is lovely and rust free we've now got great access to the block but to get full access to the block, we're gonna to need to remove a few things. Whilst we're in the engine bay, we are gonna be replacing belts. We're gonna be doing a timing belt, which means these covers are gonna come off, they will be painted. We're also gonna do a valve cover gasket because it's got a bit of a weep on it, that will be painted. To get access to the valve cover gasket, we're gonna to have to remove these hoses. HT leads, plugs, distributor cap and rotor arm are already done, but things like this are all gonna to have to be removed. And whilst we've got the radiator out we may as well replace the jubilee clips to future proof things but then at the same time it's not going to be too much effort to remove power steering pump to create a little bit more access through here i believe this is cold start injector correct me if i'm wrong that can be removed because to paint the block properly you know we're going to need a little bit more access at that point it's going to make everything around it look pretty bad so the engine mount is going to look crap so therefore that will get a nice coat of silver high temperature engine enamel and will i go into the depths of painting the top of the gearbox the bit that you see oh i don't know we will see how it unfolds and this this is an area that intrigues me the kind of fuel metering head bosch kjetronic thing that injects fuel into obviously the cold start and the five cylinders down inside of the inlet manifold we look like we've got a bit of a leak i'm hoping it's from valve cover and we can just clean it up i would love and absolutely love to remove this and send it to classic engine workshop for a nice little vapor blast will i go into that level of depth i don't know but at the same time we're going to have to remove you know loom and injectors and little things like these you know that should be a lovely bright orange that cable tie annoys me it's unsightly there's a lot of things that need cleaning up this rusty clean it back protect it paint it it's things that are really going to lift the engine bay but like i say the better you make that piece the worse everything else around it looks so when you go into this sort of depth you gotta go all the way in like we did with the mr2 and if you haven't seen the mr2 click on the pop out banner at the top of the video to watch that engine bay restoration and then we'll work our way back out Right, not a huge amount of time later, and I've pretty much got the access, well, I have got the access, to strip and paint the block. All the coolant hoses, wiring loom, power steering pump, it's still got power steering fluid in. I will change it, because I am gonna change every single fluid on this car, because 
it's good practice. So that one's tucked up out of the way, fluid still intact, wire and loom pulled up and out of the way, accelerator cable out of the way, and the vacuum hose that goes to the servo, vacuum advance to the dizzy, all that sort of stuff. HT leads obviously removed and out of the way, radiator hoses, coolant lines, everything out of the way. And the cover is ready to come off of the timing belt. Timing belt is going to be replaced as will the water pump. It was only done about 3,000 miles ago, but it was about six and a half years. So it's over the interval. And if you've gone this far, you'd be a fool not to. Water pump obviously down here. Don't know what that's going to be like to change, but we'll see as we go through. Um, I probably will still create a bit more access. A few of these will come off to remove valve cover gasket, new valve cover gasket. And colour wise, this will remain silver. Um, again, like we said earlier, vapour blasting, soda blasting, maybe paint, but we'll see, see how it comes out, see what access is created, see how far I go into it. Black silver black and also it looks from the factory that's just normal machined metal that's where the cold start injector thing was um i don't think these were painted from factory the back of the block exactly the same just like normal bare cast and the head as you'd expect just normal aluminium and this doesn't look like it's painted either surprised i thought they would have chucked a lick of paint on them but this car is one of the easiest cars I've ever worked on. All the suspension, front and rear, and all the bolts and nuts, and the way it's designed and everything has been an absolute pleasure. The only thing that might be a bit of a pain is getting this pulley off and getting to the bolts, but knowing Audi, I'm sure they will have created a little access panel where that lower grille is. Now then, many hours of cleaning later, and I'm starting to put a little bit of a plan together. Now, as you saw before, the cylinder head was very oily because the valve cover gasket was leaking. So I've cleaned it with just a paint on degreaser, like a gunk degreaser, scrubbed it down, and the oily areas have come up really well. So the oil has preserved the casting, the, the bare aluminum casting. The areas that were very oxidized, I've hit it with a wire brush and also a little twisty wire brush job, which is nice because you get into the intricate places on the drill. And it's come up nice. It's come up original, as it should do. And obviously with the engine being on the angle of a dangle, the leaking valve cover gasket filled the inlet manifold up with crap. So again, I've got the paint on degreaser in there, agitated it, wiped it in, wiped it out, got it out. And then the trickiest bit, you probably won't be able to see it, is down on the side of the cylinder head. So I used a whole can of brake cleaner on that because you can jet in on a nice angle, wash all the dirt out, wipe it out, job done. Um, so again, I'm still black, silver, black, silver. However, I quite like the original casting. You know, you, I'm starting to expose lovely bits of detail, firing order, Audi badge, you know, the Germany logo. I found an engine number, which confirms it's a KV, which is, which is good. I didn't realize, I thought it was, but now I know it is. A gearbox number. And again, if I keep this bare cast original, paint that black, paint that black, if I painted that, it would look silly against the cast. And if I painted the box, it would look silly against the cast. So I'm starting to go a little bit into the depths of, you know, the wire wheel and kind of cleaning up the original casting. And in most places, it's coming up quite nice. So I think I might go original cast on the gearbox, the head, the inlet manifold. And access wise, this fuel metering head, I'm assuming because it's on flexies, I can pull it up and around and get into clean and we might have a go with the wire brush and see how how good we can get that then throttle body will look terrible in contrast so again i think i might have to paint that i may have to paint that silver engine enamel which it is what it is we can't really get around that i don't think but again the more you remove the more access you can get 
you know, all the back of the cylinder head is now clean. I know it's pointless, you're never gonna see it, but I know it's clean and everything looks nice. So if you ever did have a little look around the back, it'll look nice and clean. So yes, again, the better you make these bits, the worse all of this makes look. So I know I'm gonna have to go into the depths of cleaning CV boots and all the metal work up the side and everything in the vicinity of this engine bay. But you know, if I got this access, it makes sense to do it and make it lovely. Right then, another quick update before we start to think about applying paint. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm having good success with the wire wheel on the cylinder head. I've continued that success down onto the engine mount and also down onto the gearbox. I've gone as far as I can reach and when everything is reassembled, you're not going to see it. But the few bits of gearbox that you do see will be original casting. <laughs> kind of taking the attitude that if I paint, it's going to be very obvious how far I've painted. However, if I clean back to original, it should look pretty, pretty good. And also, um, whilst everything's out, it's given me the access to get inside of the inner wings, remove the loom, remove the overflow tank, washer bottle, um, and everything to get right into the depths of it to clean and work my way back out. Also, it appears there's quite a lot of original, I'm assuming original factory wax all along here and this box section as well so we can dinner troll through and down the chassis leg to protect for life and also there was a lot of wax down on here and also down on the lower radiator bracket and i say inside of the front panel as well so the wax has attracted the dirt over the years which makes it look dirtier than it actually is um so yes again i say wax on the inner wings as well so um, yes, I'll continue in this area and then make hopefully the back, pull as much forward as I can and clean through just with normal wipes, just clean it all the way through and then back to its original color and then it'll dry back nice and matte and it'll all look hopefully like the day it left the factory in 1985, kind of. Anyway, paint. Right, more progress has been made and paint has been applied to the block. One coat didn't quite cut it, so it needed a second, but now it's beautiful. It's coming up really nice in contrast to the gearbox and also to the cylinder head in its original cast. And I've also done the little thermostat housing as well and the engine mount. And over here, battery tray, and engine mount to chassis and also lower radiator bracket. I've painted that with a white hammerite and obviously it was rubbed down and treated before. It's a little bit whiter than what it was before, but at the same time, it needed doing. So I can live with that. Once the battery is in this area, you'll never see it. And yes, you will see this, but there'll be so much going on over here that it will not be of importance. The rocker cover is coming off next and that will be painted too. Um, also, a lot of brackets have been painted as well around this sort of area. And also there's a tube that comes from here up across and into this plastic. I'm assuming it's like a emissions-y gubbins sort of thing. That tube was totally blocked with sludge. Down into the sump is perfectly clear and the electrical part, the valve here that it goes into, was also clear, but the tube was blocked. So it's a fault that I found and a fault that I've rectified. So hopefully it will only improve the car moving forward. We talked about this earlier. This is all nice and clean and ready to be reassembled. And the last piece on my list before I kind of work in this area is the back here. You know, I've started to clean wiring looms down and things like that but I do know to need to go a little bit deeper in the coolant pipe has been painted that's ready to go from here and snake its way across and down 
to the heater matrix or well, the heater valve which is going to go back down there and then once the loom comes back into this area i'm going to have a little bit more space also painted the bracket on the steering rack the rest of it at the back is so deep that you can't really get to it very well and also painted a little bit of the steering rods and the drive shafts which will make things look a lot better from here when everything under here has been replaced and refreshed and is brand new so yes progress is being made i will update you when this area is done and when this is done and when this is all painted and the cam belt is back on also water pump will go back on new water pump will go on soon and yes it's getting it's getting close Right, I have reached a turning point in this job now because the valve cover is off and I've done quite a little bit of cleaning on the inlet manifold and the fuel metering head K Jetronic Bosch injection system. As you can see, this side is painted. We've got a beautiful contrast between the black and the bare cast aluminium. And like I say, the top is off and everything, as you'd expect from a well-maintained 70,000 mile 10 valve five cylinder or any engine in general, it all looks super clean. This is not turned in probably six months and it all looks super smart, really cool. So I'm happy with that. So like I say, I've reached a turning point. The valve cover, I will paint it in a second. Um, I've also started to clean up in this area at the back, you know, stripped it all down, brackets have been off and everything's been cleaned and painted. I also rubbed back and painted the body number, the body number, chassis number, I'm not entirely sure. A few lines still to come back in here. Um, and it's all, it really has all come in together. Inlet manifold, I've just cleaned it down with a wire brush. I couldn't get access to everything on the throttle body, so I've remove the linkages but that gives me an opportunity to clean the linkages and grease them so it should all be lovely it's quite a trick little linkage actually when you pull the throttle it opens one of the ports and then when you get to a certain portion of throttle it opens the second one or vice versa and then there's two butterflies inside there which i thought was pretty cool quite a trick little linkage coming over to the injection system um, I've stripped it down given it a paint and painted all the lines in silver they need a second coat they're a little bit they're not quite there yet there's a few little gaps and I'm gonna add a little bit more detail in this area but I'll tell you more about that later the airbox has been cleaned all the inner wings have been cleaned again a few fittings over the back have been painted and the more you remove the more access you get all in through here and also the and the rubber ducting that goes between the injection system and the throttle body, um, I've removed and cleaned. Let me go and get that. This was filthy, this was really, really horrible, but once again, the gunk cleaner has done the business. This was really dry, nasty and horrible. There's a few little areas in the corners that I need to get in there a little bit deeper and scrub a little bit more. Then this will be treated with like a plastic treater that you use on, you know, your under bonnet plastics and stuff like that so that'll keep that looking funky fresh hopefully and um yes it is all coming together nicely also i have um removed the radiator shroud stripped and painted that so that will sit in this area and you've got the plastic cover on top of it so that should make all this area look lovely and it is all coming together very very slowly but all of a sudden it will just and it will be done and it should look absolutely glorious. And there we have it. We're all done. I said it would come together quickly and then all of a sudden the valve cover went on and it just fell back together. I'm very, very pleased with it. I've done a little bit of painting and a little bit of detail. These bits looked important, so I painted them red along with the dipstick. But, you know, little details, trying to add a little bit of a little bit of character without going too far out of the lines because otherwise the purist will be upset um cold start regulator cold start injector has been painted and i've used all the original cable ties and 
new Jubilee clips as necessary. Original hoses are lovely and supple, lovely and clean. And like I say, because it was a well-maintained car, all the coolant galleries all through, there was no corrosion. It was just lovely. It really was nice. Um, the last piece to go on was the power steering pump. Stripped the brackets off, painted them, copper greased all of the threads, put some new screws and washers in certain little places to add a little bit of niceness and yeah i'm very very pleased with how this one comes out very pleased but i have removed every single connector every single line all the way down to a bare block and rebuilt it will she still run and it's got no exhaust as well forgot that Well, there we have it. She starts, she runs, and she runs quite nicely, to be fair. It was a little bit tappy initially, but as soon as our oil pressure built up, those hydraulic lifters quietened down, and I've started it up again recently since that first start, and it starts on the button, and it's beautifully quiet. It's not losing any fluid, and most importantly, it looks glorious, and underneath the bonnet matches the rest of the car. But where do we go next? Well, we can't do any test miles, because we've got no MOT. So all of these unknown quantities can only be tested on the drive to the MOT station, which I suppose it's time to go and book. So in our next video, we should be off to the MOT station, fingers crossed for a pass to get this wonderful car back on the road once again. Thanks for watching.